leave you to it. So we've only got a short time, and um, we touched on this last time yeah. I was here. And of course, this is all about creative industries, uh, because we're now uh, developing the Creative Industries Federation. Mm. And one thing I should say is that everybody in the creative industries is really interested in creative education mm. and in what's happening in the education system. So and we, we touched on this point last time, but because it's something that really puzzled me and I think puzzled everyone in the creative industries sector, and I, I thought this would be a great place for, to start. Um, when you made your speech last November, and if I can quote, you said mm. a decade ago, if you wanted to do something different, then the arts and humanities were what you chose because they were useful for all sorts of jobs. But you went on to say, and I thought, yeah, great. But then you went on to say, we now know that could not be further from the truth, that the subjects that keep young people's options open and open doors to all sorts of careers are the STEM subjects. And of course, that was, there was a lot more in your speech, but that was the bit everyone yeah. jumped on. And um, I spend quite a lot of time as a UK business ambassador on platforms with people like the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And, and at a time when people like George Osborne and others are singing the praises of the creative industries, they're making speeches about uh, 80 billion pound contribution to the economy, 1.7 million jobs, mm. rate of growth faster than any other sector. So it just seemed rather at odds with the facts to suggest that young people should be steered away from the subject choices that could help them have careers in the UK's fastest growing sector. So I'm not, I don't argue mm. with kids doing uh, the subjects which are going to get them into science and engineering and more girls, absolutely fine. But why have a bash at the creative industries on <laughs> while you're making that point? Well, I don't think I was having to, a bash. Do you want to put the record yeah, straight? I don't think I was having a, a bash at the... Um Certainly not at the creative industries. So I think absolutely. I well, the subjects appreciate. that lead to them. Well, and I think that's the issue, isn't it? Actually, it's about keeping young people's options open for as long as possible. And I think uh, it's not an either or. And I think one of the things that we see now is that um, the conversations I've had, for example, with a local uh, web designer in Loughborough, who said actually what he's needing is young people with um, all kinds of different skills, absolutely. both creative but also technical. And I went and visited the, um, the gaming uh, course at De Montfort University, and again, they were saying the same thing. Mm. And so I think what I was trying to say was that um, it, traditionally it had been seen that you did one set of subjects because they were the ones that kept everything open, but if you knew what you wanted to do, then you narrowed it down and you did science and maths. But actually, I don't think it is an either or. I think these days, and particularly as you say, the context of speech was a campaign to get more girls sure. to be doing science and math subjects. And we are seeing that that is happening. We are getting more girls doing maths and physics at A level. Um, but what I don't want to see is um, girls in particular writing certain subjects off early because they're, they're not cool, they're not encouraged uh, to do them. And also, I'm also interested in women inequalities. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is about the gender pay gap. And again, it's mm. about making sure that young people are making informed career and subject choices and keeping those options open and actually being aware of what are the, the sectors that uh, where pay is good, progression is good, opportunities are good. But I also feel very strongly, and one of the reasons I backed the Careers and Enterprise Company before Christmas, is that young people need to be well advised so they can find their, their niche in life, fulfil that potential. But it's, it's not just advice, it's perceptions, because mm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm all for more girls going into science and engineering. But what about boys going into design? Yeah. We've got a 50% drop-off in design technology. Design is something I really know about, and it's served this country very well since the first article mm. was set up 180 years ago. And if we're losing 50% of design technology uh, students, then I think we've got a problem ahead. So how can we... How can we change the perceptions, not just for girls, but for boys as well? And how do you get this balance? That I, I, it was actually my next question, because mm -hmm. I think it's such a good point, uh, which is how can we inspire kids to combine subjects like arts and design and media, crafts with technology, engineering and maths? Surely that's where the future is for the UK. How, yeah. how, what more can we do in education to do that? Well, I think it goes back to something I feel very passionate about, which is um, inspiring and explaining to young people at a younger, younger age than we currently yeah. do it, mm. all the options that are out there and um, careers that are out there. And actually, that's why I'm, you know, I wanted Christine Hodgson has taken on this careers and enterprise company. And I think it is about going in and explaining so young people are aware. 
if you want to be an apprentice at, you know, I don't know, Rolls Royce, um, these are the subjects that you you might think about doing. But if you want to be, um, you know, I mean, how many young people actually think about careers only for things like gaming? And yet, actually, that's a fantastic industry for this country. Um, or um, the opportunities provided by by music, the character building qualities of of art and uh, and drama. Um, and, uh, and so I think it is about explaining and, and saying to people, I mean, after I get the question, you know, what qualifications do you need to be a Member of Parliament? Answer, absolutely none, apart from life experience. Um, I think young people are thirsty for that knowledge, well, that, that I, advice. I couldn't agree with you more about having to make life choices so early. But shouldn't we then, you know, the STEM subjects which get all the attention, shouldn't we be putting the A into STEM? Mm. And should we, you know, how about... <coughs> Steam, and, and you know the Arts Council talk about this, Peter Buzzard. It's a lot of people believe very strongly that we need, and it's about perceptions again as well as reality. It's about people feeling that this matters. Mm. Would you put the A back into STEM? Yes, I think I probably would, and I think um, I think it's difficult sometimes. We, I mean, education is full of acronyms, um, mm, and um, you know, and I think. Um, it's about it, it is about explaining, and I think if that's I would say that that would very much capture that it's not an either or. You need um, a combination of skills in order to succeed in the modern workplace. You know, I was talking to the to the chap again, my web designer locally. You know, who who uh, uh, who sort of fell into the business and then decided actually he needed business skills because he's setting up his own company, and then he needs to know how to employ people, and then he went off and sold the company, and they wanted him actually to do more creative stuff, and he, you know, and and it is that combination of uh, of skills. Um, and, and I do think it's about inspiring. When I, when I was at school, nobody ever mentioned the word engineer. I was an all-girls school. I don't think anyone had mentioned, well, what does an engineer do? And yet, actually, yeah. you need both. You creative well, and science, don't you? Or technology. And we need to help the teachers as yeah. well, because you know, how can they possibly know about all the options? Can I just ask about mm. Ofsted, though? Um, one of the things that's, that, that a lot of people are talking about now is the fact that Ofsted should not judge a school to be good or excellent without evidence of a quality, cultural and creative offer in the curriculum, which is supported by extracurricular activities. Would you agree with that? Well, I think they, I mean, they already have to inspect on what's called the spiritual, moral, social and cultural mm. aspects of education. And I think what they're looking for now, and a conversation I have with the chief inspectors, is broad and balanced curriculum. And I think that broad yeah. is the right way to, of putting it. Um, and, and I think it is also about, and I added as a priority to the department, the production of... Uh, well-rounded young people and I do think that character and, and I think that's what Ofsted are looking for it's um, I mean the, the but would you put specifically an arts provision in the interpretation of a balanced curriculum well I'm not sure I uh, because I think the cultural bit um, actually that that probably would do that I mean you know I would always look I mean the, the difficulty with the more tweaks we do to the Ofsted handbook the more I get pushback from the profession which is actually why don't you trust us as professionals to be giving our our, our young people, this broad and uh, balanced uh, curriculum. So if I put one thing in, then I have to put something else in. And actually what I want to uh, move to is, um, you know, as I was debating at the ASCOL conference on Saturday, this, this school-led self-improving system. And school-led, I think, is very important. It's a ghastly... It doesn't really do justice to what we want, mm. which is trusting heads and teachers. Sure. And I think your point, John, is absolutely right. Mm. Um, John Sorrell, which is that uh, about inspiring teachers as well and informing them about the skills that are that are needed and well, the importance of the different subjects opening up those horizons. Shouldn't there be an arts or creative subject in the EVAC? Well, that would really help people's perception. I think the more important thing is we're moving to this progress eight, so we're measuring. Um, uh, I mean, the EVAC is one thing; it's the subjects which universities and employers tell us they most value. But actually, from 2016. Um, all schools are going to be required to uh, look at the progress that their students make over these eight subjects, three of which can most definitely, and I suspect most likely will be, art subjects for most students. Um, and so I think that is very important. That's, that's much more looking at the progress that individual students make. Um, that's not to say that EVAC isn't important. Those are some core academic subjects. I mean, the most vocational subjects you can do are English and maths. Um, and that's where, where the, you know, the particular focus, focus lies. Could I just, sorry, no, on, I, just, I just wanted to clarify if I may, Nikki, a mm. point you when uh, asked by John putting the A back into STEAM, and you, said, and you responded, I think I probably would. Um, do you want to remove the probably, or are there still doubts in your mind? There are no doubts in my mind about the importance of arts. But as I say, every time I, as Education Secretary, do a tweak here and a tweak there, actually, we have more discussions about that rather than getting on. As Education Secretary, I'm interested in what works. 
And what works in this country it clearly is the creative industries contributing a huge amount of money. And so actually, um, I suppose, you know, I, I would say, you know, that's, that's got to be a focus. We're building a strong economy, and so we want our young people to have those, have those skills. Um, so, uh, you know, I think there will be a huge amount of support from my party, from me, and from government, actually, to, to having you know, that focus on STEAM. Um, well, that's clear. Can I just, oh, I, um, one other follow-up from something John asked you. Um, he cited the 50% drop um, in GCSE mm. numbers for design and technology plus a 23% drop in drama from 03 to 13. Um, how do you reconcile that with the support for the creative industries as industries, look at our film companies, um, our design, architecture, fashion companies, with such a drop-off in those subjects that create the talent that produce those companies that produce the economic success? Well, it's interesting because I, mean, I, suppose, I suppose there's always going to be ups and downs. And I guess I was just looking at the, um, the figures um, that we've got, obviously, in relation to um, a key stage four art and design qualifications increased by 5% since 2010 and 2% more interest entries in key stage four music exams in 2014. Uh, a lot of it depends actually on the numbers of pupils because the numbers of pupils at the end of key stage four fell by 3% during this period. So a lot of it is um, sometimes. I mean, I think the design and technology is a that is a big job, yeah, it's an issue. Um, and I think that partly goes to goes back to my point about explaining the importance of design and technology, mm. and the way that it's taught. And that's a conversation I've had with Professor John Tyra at Loughborough University, who's particularly focused on lasers um, and the use of those in the classroom and, and replicating what young people are going to do in the workplace. Um, but some of the some of the changes in numbers are also accounted for, I think, by the number the cohort of pupils that goes up and down. I think there's also been a big, um, the drop that we've seen, I think, since 2010. It's actually to do with a lot of um, students taking up vocational courses in the arts instead of the actual traditional uh, GCSE subjects. And we can't really account for that because the, sort of the, the, the reverse seems to be happening now since 2012. So since 2012, you've seen a rise in the take-up of subjects, but there was sort of a fall to 2010 with that switch, and we're not sure quite why that is. Well, it's a separate conversation completely, but I, I think the way in which science and engineering and uh, design technology are presented to young people is absolutely unbelievably important, and mm. I, I don't think we're in the right place in the way we do it. If you think something's boring, you don't want to do it. Mm. I mean, I won't say any more on that. But well, we had a conversation before about the different bodies, the Royal Institute of this, that and the other, and, you know, and they've tried for a long time to present it's, things, but clearly I, I think, think your view is it's not cutting through, and I think we need to understand better why that happened. It why just needs to look, at, you know, if it was a business and we were looking at our market and we saw we were losing 50% of our market, of our customers, mm. if you think about it that way, mm. we, you know, we'd be really worried, really worried, and we'd mm. be doing something about it very, very urgently. And I, it's interesting, it's like, a bit like apprenticeships, I mean, like, there's a debate and always about, um, again, vocational, you know, it's about also engaging families and parents, yeah. and I think, again, you know, the presenting the fact that actually creative industries, huge success story for this country, great job out there, great earnings, um, and sometimes that may not get, that, that advice may not get through. I know you haven't got much time, mm, two sorry. more quick questions, mm. first of all, um, there's something which I'm extremely interested in, which is in, it's about perceptions of the game. We all want our children to be literate and numerate. So yeah. we talk about the importance of literacy and numeracy. I would like to introduce a third word, and I would like to hear people standing up and saying, we want our children to be creative, literate, and numerate. Because creativity is the thing that glues it all together. I'm just back recently from Shanghai, a great festival in creativity, Prince William out there mm. promoting it, looking at doing business with the Chinese, and they like, love our creativity. They kind of expect us to be literate and numerate. So how about putting the word creativity alongside literacy and numeracy mm. in the way that the government presents the idea of a great education? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, there's no doubt about it that the, um, the economies, and I had the same conversation with um, Singapore, um, which is that actually they, they do admire the way that we develop our young people. Yeah. Um, whether it's, whether it's creative, whether it's characterful, whether it's uh, questioning, it's that sort of thing that's not just reciting uh, uh, lessons by rote, mm. it's actually that thinking quality that we, that we bring to our education as well. I think the more we can bring that out, the better. So if I come back to the beginning, because I know we're running out of time, um, if I come back to the beginning, this, well, I think was probably a misconception of what you actually wanted to say uh, last November. 
Can you can you, do you want to put the record straight by saying how you the important how you see the importance of creative education in the curriculum? Well, I think creativity is one of those great skills we want all our young people to have, and I think um, I want young people to be uh, taking the subject to be as I say to be making informed subject and career choices, and not to feel that any options are shut off to them or that they are less encouraged. Uh, and so that goes back to making sure that uh, young people are aware of where all the different subjects um, can, can take them and the offer that is out there. Great. John, unless, you, unless you've got a supplementary we ought to go. No, I think that's absolutely fine. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. That was great. Were you surprised at the response you had to that speech? No, because I think that there's always, um, I think I've discovered in this job that there are always people waiting to be outraged by anything and everything that any of us say. Um, and I think that there is always, uh, you know, a sort of a, uh, people, as I say, wanting to... I think what the sadness, actually, was the misinterpretation. It came from, I think, one particular person, the way they wrote it up, and then it snowballed from there. It's a chance to put the record straight. Thank you. <laughs> so it wasn't a misspeak. You were, were, you, were, you were content with the speech itself, and, and so therefore it was sort of... Misinterpreted. Well, is there a sort of hindsight you you know? I think probably I think I think always with these things it's all it's all about learning and I think as I say I, I you know now that the thing is uh, everything you say um, who is going to be outraged by it and sometimes that's you know you think well that's that's the way it's going to be and sometimes you'll think actually that's just be crystal clear this is what I'm saying and that this is the latter. Well, I'm very grateful for this opportunity from the Creative Industries Federation to to make it crystal clear my support for the creative creative industries and for the arts. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's That's job Thank you. Have you Thank um, you. bedside reading? Re give me some. Oh, yeah, good. absolutely. John, no, no, John no, no, and Darren. Great. And also about your, um, the, the Saturday schools and everything else. So, yes. Yeah. You know, we started a science and engineering yes. Saturday school. Yes, yes. It's absolutely unbelievable. They Is it doing well? They, well, it's done in, uh, it's in Kingston. They've only got 35 places. They had 150 kids trying to get through the door and they're all on huge waiting lists. It is